Welcome to my presentation on should you use a relational database or object-oriented database for final project. For this presentation, we're going to assume your final project needs the capabilities of database, which are concurrent access, reporting, and modifying data. This is extremely useful for important multiplayer game functionality such as PvE or PvP with persisting items, XP, etc. linked to your account after the game closes. It also is incredibly valuable for branching storylines with permanent consequences. Examples of this are telltale games like The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, Wolverine, and many others. These are two different ways to fulfill the capabilities that databases can provide. And there are more than just these two, such as object relational and multidimensional but we will only be going into the two former types since both of these have been used in game development and not just systems programming. I know that we have covered relational databases in this class, but a brief overview is necessary to establish some distinctions. First, some examples that use this model include World of Warcraft, which is an extremely successful fantasy MMORPG. Another very popular game that uses the relational database model is Second Life, which is a social game similar to IMVU that is VR capable. The most important distinction uh, about relational databases is that tables relating to other tables are defined through relationships. We will get into this later as to how this differs from the ODB equivalent tech terminology. Now for the, now for the disclaimer, Performance can be slow with many to many relationships as is, as is defined in this graphic. This performance inhibitor is inherent to the way relational database model handles relationships. Now, object-oriented databases may seem like a term you aren't used to. However, you've been creating object-oriented data models since you learned about inheritance back in PG1. Some examples are Cryptic Studio's Cryptic DB and Acteon's NoSQL. For the distinctions, we have uh, ODBs, object-oriented databases, have lower latency, meaning less lag, a higher read and write throughput than SQL, ease of backing up and restoring data, and it's also much friendlier to schema changes. Finally, probably the most important distinction is that we've done this model in previous classes at full sale, so it may be easier for you to understand. As for the disclaimers, it is still a new database structure to large-scale operations. However, it is being adopted more as the demand for agile development grows in popularity. Also, in some custom implementations that may require more disk space. So what is the performance comparison between relational and OODBs? It is demonstrated in this charge using a test case of common functionality both relational and OODBs have to do on a frequent basis. Specifically, if we perform two updates, 20 selects, three writes with 10 threads launched on three objects, how many iterations of this case can be performed in 60 seconds? The clear winner here is NoSQL 8, taking both the top two spots. Now that we've established performance, let's dive further into the similarities and distinctions between relational and OODBs. So to further evaluate the model from earlier, a man named Karl Meyer has two bank accounts, one registered in Berlin and the other in Leipzig. In the object-oriented model, the customer class is defined by two variables, first name and last name. It has two child classes called bank accounts and the other called address, which hold an account number and a city as variables respectively. In the relational database data model, you have a table, you have a table, the customer table, which holds an ID, a first name, and a last name. Another table called addresses with an ID, a city name, and a customer ID. And another table called bank accounts, holding an ID, an account number, and a customer ID. Now the respective customer ID columns have a relationship to the ID column in the customer table. Some of these similarities may be obvious, such as the each of the classes and tables have the same names and hold variables of the same names. 
the, the object to record the object to record equivalency is a little less easy to recognize. But if you have access to a customer's name and ID and need their model, you also have access to their associated ad associated address and account number. Now the distinction between a store procedure and a method is that a method is defined in the class to which the object belongs to, while a store procedure is a subroutine available to applications and is external to the database. So which to use? You should use uh, relational databases like MySQL in situations where disk space is a priority. You are already very comfortable with MySQL and don't have the time to create a custom database or can't afford Actium NoSQL. You want to demonstrate proficiency to your employers, future employers, on your use of mainstream database engines. You should use object-oriented databases like Actium NoSQL or custom OODB where performance is a priority. Many-to-many -many relationships are, are common, and you want to demonstrate your ability to create a custom OODB uh, slash use of non-SQL. No-SQL. Including that presentation.